Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. A little while ago, I put out a poll on the community tab on my channel asking whether you thought I should revisit the Earthquaker Devices plumes if that video hit 10,000 views. Well, the response to that poll was overwhelming. Hundreds of comments. Yeah, who am I kidding? A couple of people voted and the overwhelming decision was yes, I should. <laughs> so in that video, I wasn't exactly super positive about the plumes. I did think it had a couple of nice sounds in there, but overall, I didn't really like the way that it sounded. I didn't really like running it into a clean amp very much, although I think my favorite setting was in the, the mode two uh, into a clean amp. I, I found a pretty nice kind of edge of breakup sound that I quite liked. But generally speaking, I found it too harsh and shrill and uh, too kind of almost woolly and fuzzy. Uh, to be a, an overdrive that I would keep on my on my board. So today we're going to look at some of the key comments that were left on the video about how people thought this pedal should be used and we're going to try it out and see what we get. Before we check out those comments and listen to some sounds, if you are enjoying the video and you like the content on the channel, do consider subscribing and liking the video. It really does help the channel out. Cheers. Okay, so I am going to read off my notes here a little bit and I've conveniently made the text really, really tiny to make it nice and difficult for my old eyes to see. <laughs> so, Donnie Brooks says, I have to say I love the plumes. It took me some hours of playing to dial it in and find where I like it though. The other comments mentioning that it doesn't replace a TS tube screamer are very accurate. I think this breaks up a lot more, almost like a fuzzy tube screamer. You described it well by saying woolly at one point. Yeah, uh, I think I agree with him on that point so far. He goes on to say, another issue with Earthquaker pedals is that the neutral setting is at 11 on tone and not noon. Uh, people setting this at noon will get extra treble. And yeah, that's something that I definitely set, said in the previous video, you know, anything kind of above sort of 10 o'clock for me, I found too bright. So he goes on to say, for mine, I set it to, I set it to mode one, uh, level around 10, tone at 11, uh, gain just, above noon. It gives a nice tube breakup without adding too much. So let's give that a go. What else do you say? Oh, he says that he's running it into a clean amp, which is what I was doing as well. He does mention running a compressor before. Uh, I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to run straight plumes into uh, the amp. And yeah, we're using a Fender Deluxe Reverb model on uh, the Helix Native. Let's give it a go. So he said mode one, uh, level at about 10 o'clock, which is about there now. Tone at about 11 and gain just after 12. Right, well this is what it sounds like without the pedal engaged. You know, fairly clean uh, pedal platform, right? So let's bring the pedal in. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, that's quite similar to the sounds that I liked out of it when I was trying it out before. I probably would take the game back a little bit and probably even the tone back a little bit myself. And see. So you're getting a bit more of a kind of warmer tone, slightly less overdriven, but just kind of, you know, that edge of breakup sound that I really like, especially with a single, hook, single coil guitar. Not bad, okay. Derek Cole says, man, that Alkaline Trio shirt brought me back. I had that shirt when I was in middle school and it practically disintegrated away when I was 25 to 26, around three to four years ago. I love that shirt, LMAO. Well, I'm glad that there's some uh, fellow Alkaline Trio fans uh, watching the channel uh, and thanks for making me feel really old. Cheers. All right, next, Jeffrey Kaplan says, I use a similar setup, 
but the plumes into my Ruby 63. So what he's talking about there is, uh, I demoed it using that uh, UAFX Dream 65, which is a uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb amp sim pedal. Uh, and he's got the equivalent uh, UAFX pedal, but for the Vox AC30. Often using the plumes as a boost instead of the range master tone in the Ruby. So I don't have a Ruby, but I do have a uh, model in the Helix Native that we can check out some sounds with. Okay, so now we've got a Vox tone with the Telecaster again. Here you go. It's quite a boxy tone there. Maybe I'm just not very good. I don't really use Vox amps, so I, you know, I've, I've never, never owned a Vox amp. I've never really used Vox tones very much. So, you know, hopefully that sounds all right to you. That sounds like a Vox should sound. It's a lit, it's on the edge of breakup, but if you dig in, you start getting more dirt. Very, very shrill and trebly. Uh, let's kick it in as it is. We probably want to muck around with some of the settings as well, see what else we can do. Let's go on mode two. Gain. Try mode three. Yeah, I mean, look, again, tone is all personal preference. I don't love that, but, you know, it probably cuts through a mix really, really well. You know, loads of treble, loads of high end, even with the uh, tone dialed quite far back, you know, we're about just past nine o'clock, sort of heading towards 10 o'clock. <laughs> it's just not a pedal for me, guys, all right? <laughs> But what I do concede is that, yeah, into kind of dirtier amps, this is starting to sound uh, a little more at home, right? It does push the front end of the amp more. Uh, it's got less fizz than it probably did uh, in a completely clean amp. And, you know, having something that's quite bright probably works well in an amp like an AC30, which is already quite bright. So... Yeah, <laughs> as with all these things, your mileage may vary, right? All right, let's check out a couple more comments then. So, Dirkhead, interesting name, says all boost drive pedals sound the same. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna leave that one alone. I think. Yeah. You guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Christopher Miles says, "Dude, just saying, 
That's like Alexis on Fire's worst album. Ha! So what he's referring to then is this album here from Alexis on Fire, Old Crows, Young Cardinals. I happen to have it in the background of the video, uh, the previous video. Um, that That's my favorite Alexis on Fire album and I will fight you to the death on that one. All right, maybe that's a bit uh, over the top, but I really like that album. Uh, I really like their new album. If you haven't heard that one, check it out. Uh, yeah, excellent. I love Alexis on Fire. Uh, I love all her albums, so yeah, whatever. So again, I've done myself the big favour of printing this off in really tiny, tiny text. But Lichin, again, where did people get these names? It says, my take on this, it's really meant as a boost into a dirty amp or into another drive pedal. It's really not great as a standalone drive into something clean unless you're using mode 2, maybe to add sparkle then it does a really good job at that. And yeah, that's how I was using it in that previous video with the telly, uh, kind of just adding the edge of breakup stuff. I really, really like that sound. Uh, I didn't like a lot of the other sounds, but that one that he's talking about, yeah, I really liked it. What else do you say? So mode one sounds great, has great feel, but can get smooth enough for me on its own. It's a bit too abrasive and needs slightly more aggressive filtering. I also find symmetrical clipping a little boring. Okay. I think they should have stacked two LEDs on one side. Uh, mode two also sounds good, but I find it actually gets too gainy too quickly. They could have easily stacked some more diodes here as well to add some more headroom. Uh, overall, it's a really good pedal, but it could have used more aggressive filtering to make it a bit smoother. Uh, and yeah, I tend to agree, you know, I think it can be a bit too harsh this pedal and there's probably work they could have done to make it smoother. Uh, it does say as well, a tube, a tube screamer should never even be mentioned when talking about the plumes. They are absolutely nothing alike. Look, uh, <laughs> all, I, all I'm saying is the Earthquaker Devices website says that it's loosely based on a, on a tube screamer, right? I didn't say it is a tube screamer, I said it's loosely based on one, but you know, whatever. So look, for the last bit, I'm going to do a demo with the Les Paul. I got a patch on the Helix Native with uh, the Placator amp. Actually with that set the drive really low because wow, the output from that Seymour Duncan distortion on the Adam Jones Les Paul is so hot. So I was finding that if I didn't knock the drive all the way down on the amp settings, uh, there wasn't an awful lot of difference between having the pedal engaged and the pedal off. And I just think that's how much kind of output I'm getting out of that guitar. But look, I'll show you it and see what you think. Um, yeah, let's cut to that. All right, so I've switched to the Les Paul. This is the Adam Jones Silver Burst. Check that video out up here. Uh, we have a Seymour Duncan distortion in the bridge and it is really high output. This is what it's sounding like, just the amp. Again, it's a placator model in the Helix Native. So already quite a lot of drive. But interestingly, like I mentioned, the drive on the amp setting is all the way down. That's just how hot this is. Anyway, let's bring in the plumes. Let's go on mode one. Well look, I can see straight away why people like it. You know, if you have a dirty amp that just isn't getting quite enough gain for you and you stick this in front of it. Yeah, pretty immediately that's a significant boost. try some different settings. Again, I've got the tone backed way off as well. It's what I say about this pedal, it's just 
too bright for me. Although, I think with this amount of gain, it's not making a massive difference. Let's try mode two. three. Yeah, that sounds quite a bit smoother to me. I quite like that. I think I'm willing to concede that it's not as terrible. <laughs> Look, I never said this pedal was bad. I just said it wasn't really for me. And I think that still stands. I'm not typically using a dirty amp, but I can see why you would use it with a dirty amp. And I think it's got a really good use for that, a really good use case for that, right? Look, I don't think this has really changed my mind significantly. I don't love this pedal, and I'm, I'm probably never gonna love this pedal. I don't use a dirty amp, I use dirt pedals in front of a clean amp to get the sound I want. So uh, for that, I need a dirt pedal that kind of does the kind of dirt that I like. That sounds terrible. I'm willing to concede that maybe I was a little bit wrong uh, on this pedal. I think overall, I kind of stand by what I said on it. Uh, it's too bright for me. It's too fuzzy and woolly for me, but I can see why people use this to drive a dirty amp. Uh, they're probably the tones that I like the most out of it were into that placator uh, amp sim. So yeah, you know, in the pedal world, everybody likes different things and that is completely fine. This pedal, still not for me. I can see it has uses. Probably is for you if you love it, right? <laughs> That's the whole point. I'm not trying to tell you that you shouldn't use this if you like it. If you like it, great, more power to you, right? My channel's quite small. I'm not paid by anybody for this stuff. I'm just doing it because I like doing it. So I'm showing you gear that I like or gear that I've tried and things that I don't like because I've tried it, right? So like all things, make your own mind up. You know, watch the different videos that are out on this pedal. You know, don't take my word for it. Try it yourself. Go to a shop if you can and try it yourself. Well, if you've made it all the way to the end of the video, thanks so much for watching. And you know, hopefully it didn't upset you too much about the plumes. If you've come from that previous video I made on the pedal and you're checking out what I have to say on it this time around, let me know. You know, what do you think? Did I did I do it justice this time around? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't checked out the first video I did on the plumes, then I do recommend you watch that. Uh, probably should have watched it before this one, to be honest, but you can check that out up here. And if you want to check out something else, uh, we've got the Beatronics Vespa down here. Awesome fuzz pedal. All right, well, yeah, that about wraps things up. Thanks again, and catch you in the next one. Cheers.